A curious teenager offers his physical services to the lonely women who live in his family's villa. In 1914, in the French countryside, Mrs. Mueller and Roger ride a horse-drawn carriage toward his family's villa. During the journey, his eyes are drawn to the older woman's ample chest, and he tries his best to avert his gaze. Outside the majestic mansion, his mother and Aunt Marguerite welcome him home. One of the maids, Ursula, helps with his bags and asks the teen if he still remembers her after being away for three years, and he affirms. Mr. Frank, his father's friend, waves from the attic window. Inside the house, Roger's sister, Berta, greets him with a warm hug. Later, while the siblings stroll around the property, they run into Mrs. Mueller who's just finished picking fruit. Her husband passes by and Berta greets the older man. Suddenly, Mrs. Mueller lifts up her dress and relieves herself, surprising the teen. While wandering off by himself, Roger spots Mr. Mueller in the middle of the forest, praying in front of a picture of his wife while stuffing various flowers into his pants. The teen steps on a twig and the noise alerts the older man. So, Roger runs away, and in his hurry, he trips and falls on the ground. Seconds later, he hears giggling nearby and follows the noise. To his surprise, he witnesses Ursula making love to Adolf, one of the villa's male workers. When the woman sees the teen peeping, she simply laughs and greets him a good morning, causing the embarrassed Roger to flee. At supper, the teen stares curiously at Hélène, an attractive maid. Mr. Frank asks the mother about her daughter, Elisa's boyfriend, and she explains that he's a lieutenant in the army. She shows the man a picture of the couple, and when Berta makes snide remarks about the photograph, she calls for the governess, Kate, to take her daughter to bed. Moments later, Roger excuses himself, and when he kisses his aunt goodnight, the woman refuses him a second kiss on her cheek. That night, as the teen prepares for bed, he hears a noise from the hallway. When he investigates, he sees Elena making love to a mystery man through an open doorway. He returns to his room, and when he pulls back his sheets, sees that Berta is on his bed. The girl says she isn't sleepy and wishes to continue having a conversation with her brother, whom she's missed dearly. She says that their mother mentioned that Marguerite remains chaste because she's afraid of men. When Roger asks why Mr. Frank and his aunt aren't together, the girl says she thinks it's because the man is unattractive and a bit odd. Suddenly, Kate enters to reprimand Berta for leaving her bed, so the girl scrambles back to her room. The next day, the siblings watch the maids from across the river as they dip their feet in the water. Ursula and Ellen ask Mrs. Mueller about her husband, and the older woman confides that he still has problems in the bedroom. Moments later, Adolf and Valentin playfully tease the women from across the water, prompting Ursula to humor the men by showing off her bare backside. Roger sees this and is in shock at the sight. Later that day, their father and sister, Elisa, arrive, and the rest of the family greets them by the steps. Inside, Berta and Roger look over their father's medal samples. The older man laments about how business has slowed down, since no war means no demand for military medals. That afternoon, while the maids and Adolf work together to pull supplies up into the barn, the man catches Roger peeking up Ursula's skirt and playfully tosses hay on him. Later, Berta takes her brother to the chapel and they sneak to a crawl space above the confession booth. She says she discovered it by accident and has spent many hours eavesdropping. After his sister leaves, Roger stays behind and listens to his aunt Marguerite's confession to Father Gabriel. To his surprise, his aunt reveals that she's had inappropriate thoughts about Roger. When the teen inches forward, the ceiling gives way, causing him to fall into the priest's confession booth and shocking his aunt. Later, Elisa's boyfriend Roland arrives, and he witnesses Roger's punishment. That night, Berta comforts her crying brother and gives him a kiss goodnight. Minutes later, he hears Elaine and the mystery man making love in the hallway again. By a cabinet, he sees Mr. Frank watching the maid as well. Then he encounters Ursula, who says she doesn't know who Elaine's mystery lover is either. Roger heads to the attic, where he sees Mr. Frank using his telescope. After the man excuses himself, the teen peeks through the telescope and sees a couple making love on the grass outside. He then finds a book on Mr. Frank's table and places it in his pocket just as the man returns. Before leaving, Roger asks the man if he, too, felt frustrated as a teen, and the man says he still feels that way sometimes. On his way back, the teen peeks into his parents' bedroom. However, Roland catches him and threatens to tell his parents what he did, so Roger tells the man he'll do anything he asks. The next day, Roland orders the teen to wash his car. Soon, Elisa joins them, and when the officer gets on the vehicle to kiss the woman, Roger slips the water bucket under him, causing the man to slip and fall. Later that day, the teen hides in the chicken coop and opens up Mr. Frank's book of adult illustrations and writings. Suddenly, Adolf enters to spread hay on the ground. 
Then, Elaine appears through the window to feed the chickens. The man approaches her, and when she least expects it, he closes the window, trapping her in the small opening. Elaine begs Roger for help, but immediately changes her mind when Adolf makes love to her from outside. The teen exits the coop and sees the maid's exposed backside. He returns to the house, and while Elisa is distracted, he switches her book with Mr. Frank's adult book. He then insults Roland's shoes, prompting the man to tell his mother that he was peeping into their bedroom last night. The mother orders Roger to leave the room, but the teen stops in the corner to make sure that his sister picks up the book. Later, he watches as Elisa reads the adult book under a tree. In the kitchen, the teen surprises Ursula while she's busy taking the food out of the oven. The shocked woman reacts by breaking a plate over his head. When she realizes it's Roger, she tends to his injury while suggestively pressing her body close to his face. Suddenly, another maid enters, interrupting the pair. Determined to finally become a man, Roger follows Mrs. Mueller to the second story of the chapel. She looks out the small window to tell her husband to quit praying on the altar. Suddenly, the teen enters the room and begins touching the older woman inappropriately. At first, the woman tells him to stop, but eventually encourages him by lifting up her skirt. A messenger from outside interrupts them, and the woman rushes out of the room. Outside, the messenger informs the workers that Germany has declared war on France. Meanwhile, in the mansion, the rich family celebrates the news of war, since it means military medals will soon be in high demand. That evening, the male workers of the villa make the most of their last night and go off on rendezvous with the female workers. Roger tries to get in on the action, but finds that everyone else has already paired up, to his disappointment. The next day, Berta and her mother watch Elisa bid farewell to Roland. Concurrently, the female staff members accompany the men as they depart the villa on a horse-drawn carriage. On their way back, the women each give the teen knowing looks. Later that day, Ursula asks Roger to help her carry a mattress upstairs. In the bedroom, he makes a move on the woman, who is amused by the inexperienced teen's advances. Eventually, the woman closes the door, undresses in front of Roger, and they make love. After the deed, the elated teen professes his love for Ursula and asks her to marry him. The woman laughs lightheartedly because she realizes he only expressed the sentiment since it's his first time sleeping with a woman. Minutes later, Berta sees her brother's torn shirt and deduces that he just finished doing the deed. She then informs her brother that their mother's currently speaking to Father Gabriel. So, they head to the living room to eavesdrop on the conversation. The mother talks about her and her husband's problems in the bedroom, and the priest advises her to simply be present and open to pleasing her husband, especially now in the time of war. Suddenly, the woman hears her children giggling and reprimands them for eavesdropping. Later, while Kate brushes her hair by the river, Roger appears in the water and surprises her. He asks why she never used to sit by the river, and she says it's because she no longer feels in danger now that the men have left for war. The teen admits that he's always found her attractive. He then playfully splashes water onto the governess, and soon the two engage in pleasurable activities. Days later, Elisa rushes to inform her family that Roland made the paper after taking down a third plane. The adults gush over the war hero's bravery, and Elisa points out that her boyfriend is wearing one of her father's medals in the picture. That night, Kate and Marguerite peep into the parents' bedroom. Seconds later, Roger joins them, but the brazen teen opens the door and sits on the chair to watch his parents. The couple are engaged in a role-playing activity where his father pretends that he's about to officiate the woman's execution. Eventually, the man sees his son and the teen walks out of the room, leaving his parents embarrassed and speechless. Minutes later, Marguerite returns to her bedroom and to her surprise, finds her nephew sitting on her bed. When the teen clarifies that he'd like a kiss just like the ones she used to give him when he was a child, the shocked woman tells him to leave or else she'll call his mother. As he's about to leave, he says he hears footsteps approaching. So, the aunt asks who the visitor is and learns that it's Mr. Frank who's come to read her a poem he wrote for her. While the unaware man recites the poem professing his love for Marguerite, Roger takes the woman's hand and leads her back to the bed. He turns the Mother Mary statue so that it faces the wall, right before the woman performs a pleasurable act. Outside the door, Mr. Frank hears noises from inside the room. The next day, Roger sees that Mr. Frank just received a parcel. So, he follows the man to the attic and sees that he's peeking inside a wooden box that allows a person to view adult pictures. The teen asks the man why he doesn't just sleep with real women, so Mr. Frank explains that such a task is only easy for someone like Roger. That night, while Hélène walks down the hall, the teen calls her into his room. He asks the maid who she thinks the mystery man who makes love to her in the hall is. Since he knows it's neither his father nor Mr. Frank, Hélène says she thinks it was Mr. Mueller, but the teen reminds her that Mrs. Mueller says her husband can no longer perform in the bedroom. The maid thinks it's because he can only do so with his lover. When the maid is about to leave, Roger stops her by the doorway and makes love to her the same way her mystery lover used to. 
The next day, Berta asks her brother if he did the deed with the governess and he affirms. She admits that Kate and the maids told her Roger did it with all of them. When the girl asks if he's made love to Marguerite, he says they didn't do the deed completely. Then, Elisa passes by on her horse, so the teen follows the woman into the stables. While the woman brushes her horse, Roger offers to remove her shoes from her aching feet. However, the teen begins touching the woman inappropriately. Elisa tries to stop her brother, but they hear Mrs. Mueller enter the stables. While the older woman is busy tending to the horse in the stables next to them, Elisa finally gives in and makes love to Roger. Outside, Berta sees her brother leaving the stables and deduces that he just finished doing the deed with someone new. Seconds later, she sees Elisa and the girl realizes what just happened. That night, Ursula and Ellen enter Roger's room at the same time to make love to him. After the deed, the women exit the room. Ursula sees Marguerite make her way to the teen's room and when she sees Kate, she informs the governess that she's needed in Roger's room. As she's about to leave, the maid changes her mind and decides to join the activities. Days later, after the teen and Elisa make love, the woman reveals that she might be pregnant and that she doesn't know what to do. Suddenly, a plane flies overhead, so she pulls Roger behind a tree so Roland doesn't spot them. After the war hero lands the plane, the family greets him, and he happily informs them that he's been promoted to captain. On their way back to the house, a carriage carrying the male workers, who've returned from war, passes by. Later, the maids and the workers suspend Adolf by his injured leg to lengthen it. Suddenly, a crying Mrs. Mueller passes by and informs them that her husband died in the war, prompting the other maids to comfort her. That night, Ursula enters Roger's room to tell him that she's with child. He suggests that she marry Adolf, but the woman refuses, since he's a cripple now. So, she considers marrying Valentin, even if he's lost one eye. Before she leaves, the teen asks her to bring him a bottle of red nail polish. After the maid leaves, Marguerite arrives to tell him that she's also pregnant. So, Roger suggests she marry Mr. Frank, whom he considers a nice man who's clearly in love with her. Soon, Ursula returns with the red nail polish, so the teen takes her with him to Elisa's room. There, he instructs the maid to place some nail polish on his sister's sheets. Furious, Elisa tells Ursula to stop and take the bottle of nail polish from her. To calm the women down, Roger tells the maid to wait for him in his room while he speaks to his sister. He tells Elisa to find Roland and tell him that they must make love immediately. So, Elisa heads downstairs to find the clueless boyfriend. Roger returns to his room to fetch Marguerite and takes her to the attic to be with Mr. Frank. In the stairway, the teen overhears Elisa convincing Roland that they can sleep together before marriage because Father Gabriel said it's okay to do so during wartime. Then, Roger heads to Kate's room to ask her if she's pregnant. To his relief, she says no, signifying that he's managed to tie up all his loose ends. In the hallway, he sees Hélène, whom he takes back to the bedroom, and he makes love to her and Ursula. Meanwhile, Marguerite makes love to Mr. Frank, and Elisa makes love to Roland. Days later, in the chapel, everyone witnesses the simultaneous weddings of Elisa and Roland, Marguerite and Mr. Frank, and Ursula and Valentine. Soon, Roland flies off on his plane to return to war. During Roger's last day in the villa, the three women he impregnated all jokingly suggest that they'll name their future sons after him. Before he leaves, the teen bids Ursula goodbye. He tells her that she can always visit him in town, but the woman thinks it's better if they just forget everything that happened. She thinks that in a few years, Roger might not even remember her, but the teen says he'll never forget the woman. As they're about to lean in for a kiss, his father calls for him. While taking his bags out of his room, Roger sees Hélène and realizes she's pregnant as well. When he says that she needs to get married, she says it won't be necessary, implying that she'll be alright. Before they drive off, Roger's mother warns him not to get caught up with all the women in town. Seeing the irony in his mother's statement, the teen simply hides his knowing smile. As the car drives away, Roger looks back at the women who made his summer truly unforgettable. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.